Uh, 1 Peter 2 and 21, look what it said to you and I, uh, as we start to deal with Peter's concept of suffering and how it unites us. Uh, think about a time, think about a time uh, uh, in the concept of when uh, going through a tough situation brought you closer to your family or even your friends. We, we discovered that last time. Uh, sometimes when when it go when you're going through some stuff, uh, it, 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 it finds a way of uniting. I was thinking, I was talking to my wife today, and, and, and one of the things I discovered after 25 years of being married, praise the Lord, <laughs> uh, that, that some of our closest moments come when we go through some struggles together. Because it, it's not so much about what you want or what I want, but, but we have to learn when to have to walk, work together. We, we have to learn that, that uh, again, if we got to, if we only have enough money for one plate, we got to figure out how we're going to come together and you get what you want and I get what we want. And, and we put it all in one plate. Because oftentimes suffering and the pain we go through has a way of uniting. Amen. But I want to share with you what First Peter said. First Peter uh, chapter 2, 21, he says, you, you have been called, I want you to see this, uh, because Christ suffered for you. And, and as we look again and realize it, that he leaves you an example that you should follow, watch this, in his footsteps. Look again what, 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 what First Peter said. He, 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 he leaves you an example. Can, can we just uh, look at Jesus who was a suffering saint? You look at Jesus that even as we, as we look at a book of Isaiah, it talks about how he will be bruised for our iniquity. And by his stripes, we're going to be healed. When we look at it, Jesus becomes an example to us of, of every now and then how we can go through our suffering and endure and still come out better. So, so here it is, Jonah, tonight. When we start to look at it, we realize that the agony that Christ felt while being crucified illustrates the power of endurance. Uh, please don't miss it. Let me share it again because I, I don't want nobody to miss this tonight. Uh, sometimes the suffering, even what we saw as it relates to the cross, it shows us the power of endurance. Because when we realize that Jesus, even though uh, he was spat on, thorns placed on his head, he was beaten uh, by calamine whips on his back, but, but we never hear him say a mumbling word, but he used his suffering, he used the nails on the cross to show you and I the love. Amen? That he had for us. So can I share this with you as we start to look at it? Philippi, I'm sorry, Philippians. That's about Philippi. <laughs> Philippians chapter 2, I bought the 8 million dinner now. I'm good, not deep. Philippi chapter 2, verse 8. Look what it says. And being found in passion as a man, he humbled himself. And here it is for us. And became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Paul says that when we look at the example that was set by Jesus, how he endured, what did he endure? He endured the pain. He humbled himself. Here is God in the flesh uh, that humbled himself down under the hands of man and took the nails in his hands. I want to talk to him. Here is, here is a deity. Here is, here is God that humbled himself and allowed people to put thorns on his head. You talking about suffering? You, you're talking about be, being beaten 42 times on his back with, with calamine whip. He endured all of this. And he showed you and I what it means to be obedient because he had an ultimate goal in front of him. And that goal was to die for you and I that we may have life and have it more abundantly. To die for us so that we can have an example. To die for us so that we won't be afraid of, of death and be afraid of what's going to come because he left an example for us. Of how we endure. Now, I'm not telling you to go and get some calamine stuff. I'm not telling you to go get no thorns on you. No, no. Please don't, 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 don't think I'm telling you to do that. But what I am telling you to do is, is look at Jesus. How he endured. How he didn't cuss nobody out. Y'all talk to me. How, how, how he didn't have a get back mentality. But he endured it, knowing that that if he endured it for the sake of the obedience for you and I, then here it is. He shows us how we can get through our suffering. Let me share this with you because I, I think this becomes important for us because when we start to look at uh, this concept of 
suffering. I want to share with you something that I learned in middle health. And hurt people hurt people. That's the way we are here. That when people are hurt, oftentimes they they oftentimes will want to hurt others to make them feel better. And, and, and when we start to see Jesus, Jesus had every right, King, to, to, to do get some get back. Y'all talk to him. He had every right uh, to slap somebody for what they did. Come on, y'all, let's talk to him. He had every right to call out the angels from heaven and say, wipe them all out. But when we look at Christ, we look at it from the fan point of Christ suffered an unjust crucifixion. He endured the treatment, and here it is, and did not retaliate against those who caused him. Okay, let, let me, I, I, I please, I, I, I hope the folks who joined it with me online didn't, can't, didn't miss that. He, he didn't go after anybody. He didn't get the 357. He didn't, uh, didn't, 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 didn't go and you know, post all, you know, black men put stuff on Facebook. No, no, no. What, what, what he did figuratively was he took the punishment because he understood that, that his goal was much bigger than, than the things he was going through. And, and so I, I, I began to look at this and I say, okay, uh, if, 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 if we are to be like Christ, if, if people have hurt us, because it, it happens, y'all, they hurt you hurt your feelings. If, if, if the people have caused you pain, the people have done some stuff to you, uh, then then how do we endure it? How do we get through it? Well, when we begin to think about it, uh, he, here is the question tonight. Have you, have you <laughs> ever retaliated against someone who caused you to suffer? Is that quiet? Got in here too? Have, 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 have you ever uh, the desired your... your they done some digits and you did the same. Come on, y'all. <laughs> you know, they, they they did you wrong and, 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 and you you did everything you could to plot against them. But we gotta understand that that when we are suffering, when we're in pain, just getting back at folks are not gonna make it better. You don't know, preacher. You don't know. You don't know. I cut that after I did that. <laughs> just for a moment with the saying, it was it was good. It put a smile on my face and come. If, if, if they hurt me, I gotta hurt them. You know, you know and some of us would be bold enough to say, the Bible said they hit me, I hit them back. That ain't in the body. <laughs> but but we we hey, we 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 are bold enough to, to, to understand that 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 when when we when people cause us pain, we, we 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 have grown to a point where we don't do the same thing they did to us. Amen. Okay, thank you, Joni. Jump, Joni, with me, cause come back in the day. <laughs> when somebody called me to lose my job, I'm gonna do everything again to call them somebody. You know, you put my business out there, but put yours out there. You know, when, when, when it came down to you broke my heart, I'm gonna make sure I slash some time, uh, bust the windows out your car. You know, come on, talk to me. <laughs> well, make make sure. That, that I do everything. D, D ain't smiling because he, he he might have flashbacks over there. But the reality of it is that 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 yes, we're gonna have some pain for a Yes, we we're gonna have some times when we want to retaliate, we want to get back. But Jesus teaches us that 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 what what doesn't break us can make us. What 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 we go through, we can't give those who hurt us the benefit. Of, 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 of getting uh, on our last nerve or uh, uh, showing them that they hurt us. We got to be like Jesus. Because Jesus never said a mumbly word. He, 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 he even got on the cross and said, forgive them. Y'all can see it in a minute. But they know not what they do. So again, when we deal with pain, because guess what? Sometimes it's going to be painful. Sometimes you got to suffer because of what people do and say to you. But how do we react as we groan in Christ? Amen. It, it, it tells a story of where we are. Everybody with me? So, so again, as we start to look at it, we realize that, that here it is. Uh, it, instead of uh, uh, finding ourselves going through moments, we got to learn how to find what we call commonality. Look again. Uh, in, in 1 Peter, watch what happens here. Uh, we find the example of Christ not retaliating against one another, 
but instead doing what? Facing the challenge while working for the common good. This is the key for us. Uh, it, 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 instead of us spending all our time uh, try, trying to plot against all, <laughs> we, we, we've got to find some common good that comes out of all of this. I, I realized that, that, that some of the stuff that people did to me, I, I thank God for. Because, uh, again, if, if they wouldn't have broke my heart, I, I wouldn't have my Tina right now. Ooh, y'all didn't see that. <laughs> no. so, sometimes you have to look at it. Yeah, if, if they wouldn't have tripped on that job and I walked off, I wouldn't be where I am today in this job. So sometimes we have to look for the common good in everything and not allow our, our days to be one of bitter and misery because of the pain and suffering that I have been through. Amen? Anybody, anybody just know people who, who they still stuck and what they did to me back in 1955, 1983, you, you know, when, when I was in high school in 91, this is what they did to me. But the reality of it is that Jesus is an example for us that, that even though, yes, we had to go through some things, Jesus teaches us according to Peter, it, it's not about to get back. It's not about retaliating. It, it's not about get, getting even with people. Here it is. But we learn to find a commonality. We learn to find something good out of everything that we go through. Anybody know that, that all things work together <laughs> for the good of those who love God and those who are called according to In other words, here is the key for us. Uh, when, when you love God and you love what you do, God works some things out for your good. Even though people might have meant it for evil, even though they may have broke your heart, even though they may have done something called rumors and caused some pain and suffering in your life. We've got to keep the concept of, look, God is working this out for my good. Right. Anybody with me? So, so again, as we start to look at it, we realize that, that finding commonality is where we are. Here it is. When we think about it, you're, you're not alone in this. We, we should always remember that many people around the world have suffered and continue to suffer forms of injustice and oppression. Here's the thing. I, I know you're the only one that, that he broke your heart, that, 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 that she didn't do you right. But in reality, people get their hearts broke every day. People lose jobs every day. There are some people that you you mad because you went to the grocery store and they didn't have your favorite milk on the shelf. But there are some people that, that don't even have milk or even a store to go buy it. So sometimes when we, when we look at what we're going through, the pain and suffering, we also have to keep in mind that I'm not by myself. I'm not the only one that ever had my heart broke. I'm not the only one that ever lost his job. I'm not the only one that he did wrong. I'm not the only one that, that have had my car repos. I'm not the only one that, that have had some things that happened in my life. But here it is. Because of that, my task is to make sure that whatever I go through, that I have to learn to show the world that I'm now in Christ. And now that I'm in Christ, I, I, I've got to look out, amen, for, for, for those who have to go through the same thing I did. Amen. And so when we start to look at it, we realize that, that, others, that there are others that are out there that are worse off than you are. Here it is. We must never forget the marginalized and the poor who have already been suffering and often bear a disproportionate share of crisis. One of the things I looked at uh, some years ago, back in 94, uh, when the flood came uh, in this area, when it came in Macon, uh, somebody remember that, amen? And, and you, you know, oh, I'm, I'm dating myself. Ooh, <laughs> she, she, you heard that quick, she will. <laughs> she don't remember nothing. <laughs> but, but, wait, you don't say that, you were, you were making us look old over here. <laughs> <laughs> we, we would remember like yesterday. And, 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 and the other side of that, I, I, I had just graduated from college, came home, and, and I was mad. I was like, how the flood gonna come through? And then I had to I had to look at the television, I had to look around. I was on the east side of it. And and, and and the only thing that we didn't have, you know, we didn't have a lot of the water, had to boil that. But but I had no flood waters in my neighborhood or anything, and I'm mad. I'm like, man, I can't go here, I can't do this. And then I had to look out and say, okay, wow, there's homes that flood. <laughs> that there are bridges that we can't get across. You know, there are people that don't have any water. They had to go and take showers outside. And what it did for me, it made me realize 
that even though I'm in a crisis, there were others that were so much worse off than me. Amen. Anybody have to look at situations like that and say, you know what? I, even though my, my bank account don't look good right now, but but I thank God I still got you know my, my utilities paid. Yeah, <laughs> still, still paid all the bills. I may not be able to eat it out of God tonight, but I thank God that uh, it, it, I still got a little food in the in, in the refrigerator. Sometimes when we when we deal with suffering and pain, we got to learn to look outside of self and and think about the fact that it could be worse than it is. That, that you're not the only one that had going through crisis, and sometimes we we get that it's all it's about me. No, 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 it's not about you. Because in reality, there are others that are marginalized. There are others that are poor. What what blesses my heart more than any time? Sometimes I turn my television on and I see those in the foreign countries, and I'm complaining about what I'm eating tonight. <laughs> and, and I had to realize that 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 they, they they're trying they're happy for a little piece of bread and walk. Here I am, man, because my Mountain Dew is cold. It ain't cold the way it needs to be. That, 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 that I, I didn't get my right. Amen. They didn't put no fries in my bag when I went to Wendy's. Y'all want to talk to me. So, so sometimes we, we have to uh, look at the fact that there are others that are worse off than us. And, and, and I, I believe we can face our pain and suffering more when we recognize, look, you know, God is allowing me to go through this, but he will never put more on me than I can. And when we start to look at it, we realize here it is that, that even as we're following Christ, it requires you and I to maintain a commitment to all people, especially those who are most in need. And so, so when we start to have our own pity party, remember you are called to go into all the world, according to Matthew 28 and 19. You are called to go out and teach and baptize and win people. Even in the middle of your situation. That's why Jesus comes to mind when he said, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Yes, he knows you got some suffering. He knows your heart. But, he, but when we seek him first, he says, and the rest shall be added. Let him handle all of that while, while you're seeking him. Let him deal with the, the people who did you wrong while you're seeking him. Let him deal with, with that grief and broken heart and depressed mindset that you have while you're seeking him. And that's when we find ourselves uh, able to climb out of our depressed mode, climb out of, you know, that, that get back mentality, because the more you seek him, the less you'll be ready to retaliate and, and be bitter and, and, and find yourself in a point where all your joy is gone. Amen. Somebody know what I'm talking about, because, you know, some, 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 some kind of way, the only way you got beyond where you were well, you kept seeking. You kept believing that, that God would not let me suffer long. Anybody know what I'm talking about? So, so when we think about it, here it is. Following Christ requires a commitment. It requires you to be guilty. It requires you uh, to, to learn how to endure. <laughs> and, 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 and not only endure, but, but learn how to be patient in the things that God is allowing to happen even in our lives. I did say a lot because, you know, every now and then we, we always, no, that God ain't, you got to understand, sometimes God allows certain things. We talked about to alert us, to direct us, to shape us. But, but now sometimes God will allow certain things to unite us so that we can have a kindred spirit with those who go through the same things we're going through. Everybody know what I'm talking about? So when we start to look at it, we realize that, that here it is for us, uh, how does God use pain and suffering for the purpose? Of uniting us with believers in Christ. How? How does God use suffering to unite us with other believers? Anybody want to throw their head in that one? Somebody going through the exact same thing you went through. And, and, and who better to help uh, someone to go through than those who walked in the same footsteps? Amen. That shows how much we need each other. Because one of the things that, that we realize, and, and, and when you bring us such an excellent point, because there are some people who lose loved ones, uh, who've lost mama and dad, 
and, 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 and here it is, you better equip to help those who are hurting if you've lost yours. Y'all miss that. When, when we look at those who, who have who have lost a job, and who, who better able to minister to those than those who have lost a few jobs? <laughs> Y'all talk to me here. Flunked out of school or, 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 or who went through some things. The reality of it is that, that God uses sometimes uh, some of the suffering and pain for moments in our lives to unite us with other believers who may be going through the exact same thing that you came out of. Go ahead, Dean. Uh-huh. Do you believe we're going to suffer until the day we leave this world? We will. I do believe that. Because the Bible says in, in, in this world, you're going to have tribulation. You know, you, you're never going to truly be delivered from tribulation. You're going to deal with some suffering on this side. Amen. If, if it's not things in this world, sometime when you wake up in the morning, you get a little older. And, 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 and the arthritis kick in and Y'all won't talk to me in a minute. So, so, sometimes the pain stuff. You, you you go to the gym and you come out worse than you went in. Because you recognize, I just can't do it the way I used to. We get old. You know, we, we experience pain. And it's not because God don't like you. It's because you get older. It's because your body was never meant, amen, to last forever. Amen. How many of you know we, we live in temporal sanctuary? Your body is a sanctuary, and, and here it is. It will wear out. <laughs> it does get older. Amen. How do you know? Because some of us are wearing glasses that we thought we would never wear. But, but get, get a little older. You got your walking stick now. Got your gray hair now. Y'all on it now. You, you, you don't move as fast as you used to. And it takes a little bit longer to get out the bed. Y'all talk to me here. Because the reality of it is that sometimes through our suffering and pain, it, it allows us to coordinate. It allows us uh, to be in kindred spirit with those who have been through the same thing. So, so, so how do we do that? Well, when we think about this, uh, suffering helps us to see the need, watch this, of other believers. Suffering helps us to see, S-E-E, the need of other believers. Let, let me back that up for you. When you, when you start to think about it, uh, sometimes you will never know a person's need until you can see them. Amen? Think about the, the, the man who was, uh, amen, calling out to Jesus, uh, Martin Mayer's blind man. Uh, he he would have never had his needs met until he cried out. Somebody would never have, they had saw him all the time, but they didn't know his need until he opened his mouth. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's oftentimes what we see, even in the body of Christ, that, that sometimes when we go through, we have, a, we have a way of seeing people differently who are going through the same thing we've been through. Anybody know what I'm talking about? So, so when we start to think about it, here it is, look, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 26. Can I take you there? 1 Corinthians chapter 12, amen. Let's go there. First Corinthians chapter twelve. Uh, let, let me let me give you uh, verse twenty six. Verse twenty six. Let's go there. Amen. Verse twenty six. Uh, you have it. First Corinthians. Uh, I, I made it too little, man. I was looking at it. I was like, man, I can barely see it. I'm up this glove. First Corinthians chapter twelve. <laughs> Dean said, I'm all the way in the back. Three. Okay, you make it a little bigger next time. <laughs> look, look, look what Paul said to the church of Corinth. He said. And where the one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. One member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now, look at verse 27. It said, ye are the body of Christ, and members in particular. Look, look again what Paul said. And, and when, because we are all a part of one body, when one suffers, he says, we all now, now, again, as, as we began to look at it, we, we realized that, that because we're all the body of Christ, uh, let, let, let me see if we can look at it from a figurative standpoint, because we're all the body of Christ, look at your own body. And, and, and when you look at your own body, when, when your head hurt, let's talk, y'all, it impacts every part of your body. Somebody talk to me. You know, when, when, when your hand or your arm or your foot hurt, 
it, 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 it impacts the whole body joint. This, this is what Paul is saying to the church of Corinth. He said, uh, because we're all members of the same body, when one suffers, we all suffer. And this becomes important because when we think about it, it, it describes the unity of all believers. The Apostle Paul said that all members, that means you, me, everybody, all members of the body of Christ should work what? Together and care for one another. That, that's the key right there. Uh, and and, and we, we're understanding this concept of unity. Uh, we, we realize that that when, we, when we're all on one accord, when we're all working together, uh, we ultimately see that, watch this, we should be caring for one another. Amen? Don't, don't tell me how much you love me, and, and when I'm going through, you know where to be found. Can, can we be real? You, you, you say we're members of the same body, but when I'm in the hospital, I never get a call. You say we're, 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 we're part of the same fellowship, but, but, but when I lose my job, you want to talk about me and say, well, you, what you did wrong. But what Paul introduces to you and I is that when people are suffering, that is the time we work together. That's the time where we exercise the concept of edification. We build up each other. Yeah. Amen. And, and this is what Paul is saying. When we're going through some of those moments, the goal is unity. Amen. I was talking to one of my members today, and, 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 and me and her were talking about how, how when she was going through that the, the church was there for her, and she was saying how much she loves her church. Here it is. Because in the moment of her greatest, darkest hour, she had someone she could lean on. Wasn't a family, but it was a church. And, and, and that is why Paul was saying that, that because... Sometimes even when your family don't do right, the church ought to be the, set, the, 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 the other side that fill in the gap. Amen. Let me say that again because I thought that was profound. Uh, <laughs> even when your family don't act right, you, you ought not to lose your mind because the church ought to be the one filling the gap. That's what Paul is saying here, that, that when one is suffering, those who are the member of the body, should be the first one to reach out, to call, to check on them, do it all they can. Here it is, because here it is, to care for one another. Amen. Ooh. Let me keep going. I said I did say should. So, so again, as we start to look at we realize that, that what suffering oftentimes does for us, suffering allows us to see others. But here it is for us. When we think about it, he also mentioned that they should have a heart towards sympathy. I, I'm right there in the outline. They should have a heart toward sympathy. Now, why is this important? Uh, when, when we think about sympathy, we're thinking about we ought to care enough. We ought to have enough feeling within us as fellow members, even if they are different from you. Y yes, y'all didn't go to Perry High School together, but but you still ought to care about y'all talk to. Me. No, y'all 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 don't like the same sports team. Some of y'all are Falcons fans, some of y'all are 49ers fans. But in essence, we still ought to be able to fellowship together, even if Pittsburgh don't go through anything this year. They, we still ought to be able to fellowship one to another. Amen. Amen. So here it is. We ought to have a heart for others. We ought to still be able to support each other no matter who goes to the Super Bowl. Amen. So the reality of it is that he mentions we ought to have a heart towards sympathy with, with fellow members. Even if they are different, they may, you may not even speak to them. You don't even know their name, but when they're suffering, you ought to be one of the ones that step up and say, you know what? Uh, whatever we can do. What we need to bring over to the house. Stop by some Coca-Cola. Get some Sprite. Let's do all we can. Get on the phone. Do what you can do. Because that is what at the end of it all, it lets people know you care. Is that a way, man? So that's what Paul is saying, that, that when we're suffering, we're suffering together. So again, as we start to look at here it is for us, that, that when we began to recognize what other believers have to offer us, then we will realize how much can be gained. Here is that word. By reaching out for the help, we are going through a time of struggle. See, here it is. You, you never know who could be a blessing to you. 
Because if you were there for them, they may be there for you. I had an instance. Uh, I, uh, I was, uh, my, my wife, you know, when they were uh, moving into their, their classroom, a uh, young lady, first day of school, I went out. I went by the wife, and we were planning some stuff. I was on my way to my car. Young lady, first year teaching, she's out there. And, and here, is, here is the key. She had a flat tie. Deep, let me share this with you. Uh, she was looking at YouTube. Trying to figure out how to fix her tie. I'm like, I'm too much. What's, what's she, you know, the tie is flat. What, what's she doing? She said, I'm, 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 I had to look at YouTube to figure out how to change this tie. I said, you know what? Let, let me help you. <laughs> Put your phone away. Let me, let me see what I can do to help you. But, but here is on the side of it. If you didn't have a caring spirit, we would have walked right, right past us. Amen. Oh, John. But, but that is what God does for us. Uh, when we recognize that God gives us a caring spirit. And when we have a caring spirit, we recognize as believers what we gain is the fact that we gain the fact that in a time of struggle, you just never know when you're going to be on the side of the road. Amen. Amen. It was her this time, but it may be me next time. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Anybody just did something and it came back <laughs> to you? <laughs> it became a, a, the essence of reciprocation. Uh, what you've done for others, it comes back to you. Amen? And, and that is what he is saying, that what unites us is the fact that when we learn how to decrease and allow others to increase, when we learn how to put us second to others, that, that here it is, that God can give benefits to those who humble themselves down. Those who say, you know, this ain't about me. I'm going to help somebody along the way. Amen? Anybody have some instances? Will you reach out? Go ahead, D. Uh, yeah, I want to play it. I, uh -huh. I want to say that a few more times. No, no, I got time, man. I'm all right. I ain't got nothing to do with it. So, that happened yesterday. Amen. I was right at work. It was going through one of them tickets. Last night, I was going to stay around. I was sitting there. Wow. Right. We got to go to work. I was working. We did it. Like, I got up. Uh, Just like that. I went to the coffee. I said, I'm going to get up. 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 I'm Reaching out. And it, 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 it's another thing for us to talk about being Christian. But it's another thing when they can see your works. To see that we are part of the body. We are an extension of Jesus. And, 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 and there's that concept, what would Jesus do? And, and we have to start looking at our lives and say, you know, when people are hurt, what would Jesus do in this situation? And, and if Jesus would, would take out of his pocket and bless somebody, if Jesus would stop long enough to help somebody change the tie, then, then who are we? We all have to. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's the best. It's because we, we, we did it for the right reason. For the right reason. And, and that is why when we, when we go through, here it is, there's benefits in reaching out to others. So as, as we start to look at it, here it is for us. When we think about it, suffering helps us to meet the needs of others as we allow Christ to live through us. Let me say that again. Suffering, the pain, some of the stuff we go through, here it is, helps us to meet the needs of others as we allow Christ to live through us. Amen? Now, I'm going to share with you, according to 2 Corinthians chapter, chapter 1. Let's go there. 2 Corinthians Chapter 1. I want to share this because I, I think Paul uh, comes to mind when he talks about uh, all, all the stuff that we go through. Second uh, Corinthians chapter 1. Uh, take a look at verse 3. Uh, and, and look what it says simply for those who, I'm going to give you a few minutes. They, everybody ain't got them smartphones. Sometimes we, we got to put our big Bible out, right, don't we? Look, look again. Second Corinthians chapter 1. Uh, look at verse 3. It said, Blessed be God. Even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercy, and the God of all comfort, who, watch verse 4, comfort us in all of our tribulation, that we may be able to do what? Comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. Look what Paul said. Paul said, the God of all comfort. <laughs> You, you know the one that that uh, that says weeping endures just for a night, but joy will come. The, the God of comfort, 
who says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. The same God that comforts you when you're going through your tribulation, when the storms of life are raging for you, he said, it is that same God that comforts you and helped you to get through what you went through. It is, he says, then you have to learn to comfort others who are going through their tribulation. That's why it is important for us. When we start talking about uniting, when we start talking about how suffering unites us, when God brings you out of your storm, here it is, help somebody else come out of there. <laughs> when, when, when you go through your uh, moments of pain and sickness, and, and you have a kindred spirit with others, then help others to get through. Amen? Because, again, some people, when they go through, they think they don't have anybody. Nobody's there for me. But here it is. If, 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 we, if we have nothing else, then God has given you a ministry of sickness, <laughs> a ministry of peace, a ministry of pain. That here it is, it may be you by yourself, you and God, but here it is, it is a ministry that God can use to bless others. Because if you came out of your trip, if you made you your storm, yes, it hurt, yes, you wanted to give up, but if you came through it, here it is, and God helped you get through it, he says, help somebody else. That's really what he's saying to you and I, because again, it goes back to what he said, we're all members of the same body. Amen. And as being members of the same body, we suffer with one another. And as we're suffering with one another, what God does is he begins to help us to get through what we're going through. So, again, suffering helps us to meet the need. Now, watch this. Uh, Paul opens this letter by praising God who has shown so much mercy and comfort to Paul. Amen. Paul had many occasions uh, where, where he testifies of the things that he went through for God's sake. So, he now gives us what we call a personal testimony from someone who has experienced God, watch this, on a first-person basis. Ooh, that, that, that's such a concept for us. Because every now and then, I, I want to share with you, there are some moments that you can testify when you didn't have money in your pocket, and you had bills and the children needed food, you experienced God on a personal level. And when you experience God on a personal level, you and God got closer than you ever had. Somebody talk to me here. And, and through those experiences, you recognize how I can trust God even in my darkest moments. And so when we start to look at it, Paul said that, that yes, I, I've experienced God, and, and, and the more I experience God, the more I can deal with any tribulation.